presented by DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. The most exciting car today is now delighting the far highway. It's the lovely, it's the manic, it's DeSoto. Is the one, the only... Well, what do you know? That's me. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word... <laughs> the secret word, boys, will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is door. George Fenneman, who's supposed to try for the $2,500? Well, uh, just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any young single people present tonight. And our studio audience selected um, Miss Nina Kramer, Mr. Clarence Allen. And here they are. Folks, come on in here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And you say the secret word, you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. You're both single, eh? And we'd like to get married someday. Miss uh, Nina, N is that the way Nina. you pronounce it? Nina? Mm-hmm. Oh. I used to know a tenor named Nina. <laughs> uh, where, are you, where are you from, Nina? I'm originally from Chicago. Uh-huh. How originally were you in Chicago? <laughs> Nineteen years ago. Nineteen years ago? Then you've been here about two years, is that right? No, I've been here about ten years. Oh, you're not 29, are you? Now you've got me confused. No, I'm 19. You left Chicago 19 years ago and you're 19 years old? No, I was 19. How did you come out? By bassinet? <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you mind repeating that whole thing again? How old well, are you? I'm 19. 19? Yeah. How long uh, since you left Chicago? Oh, uh, about 10 years. Oh, I see. That would make you 14 years old. You can leave it at that. Okay, leave it. And uh, what's your hometown, uh, Sonny Boy? Clarence? I'm from Claremont, California. Claremont? Claremont. I thought that was in Oklahoma. Not the one in California. Probably not. And I guess the one in Oklahoma is not the same one that's in California. That's where Will Rogers comes from, you know. Oh, he does? Claremont. See, now you've learned something tonight. It'll cost you $3. <laughs> what, is, what is your age, Clarence? I'm 25. What kind of work do you do, Clarence? I'm a geologist. Don't change the subject. I asked you what kind of work. <laughs> well, a, a geologists are really doing a wonderful work these days. Now, what do they do? <laughs> oh, we study rocks, hunt for minerals, hunt for oil, hunt for anything valuable in the Earth's surface. You actually look for rocks, is that it? That's right. Just wanted to be sure on this program, we never take anything for granted, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Stop groaning, it's free, you know this. <laughs> Nobody forced you to come down here. Today. I could have used all your tickets tonight. <laughs> now, as a mining engineer, what would you say is the most valuable mineral? I'd say coal. You would, huh? I hate to bring a girl a wedding ring made out of coal. <laughs> How about uranium? Do you ever look for that? Oh, yes, we look for uranium, although it's scarce enough around here, so normally it's only when we're looking for some other mineral as well. You mean if you want to find uranium, you have to look for something else? <laughs> well, that's what we do, yes. That's kind of ridiculous. Why don't you start out looking for uranium? And then maybe you'd find coal. <laughs> Now, Clarence, you're a nice guy. I like you, and I want to see you and, and Nina well provided for in your married life. I'll tell you what you do. You give me a dollar, and I'll tell you where you can find uranium. Okay? No. I know where I can find uranium myself. Oh, you do, huh? I do, too, in the dictionary, and that's an old gag. <laughs> what sort of work do you do? I'm a librarian. A librarian? Really? Is that so? I didn't realize librarians came this young. Oh, well, there are lots of young girls in libraries. Aren't you unusual? What's that? There are lots of young girls in libraries. Oh, is that so? <laughs> I guess I'll have to start reading again. I used to belong to the crook of the month. Is that... Uh... Now, what, what library do you work for? The Beverly Hills Public Library. 
Really? I, I live in Beverly Hills. I don't think I've been there. <laughs> Where is it located? Well, it's in the city hall, uh, right next to the police station. Oh, well, I've been there all right. <laughs> On the other hand, maybe it was the library. As I recall, they booked me at the time. <laughs> How well you work together as a team. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play, you bet your life, for a chance of $2,500. But first, there's something I want you to pay close attention to. It'll prove invaluable in your marriage. dollars you selected animals and nursery rhymes. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Eighteen. Eighteen. Sounds good. Eighteen. Uh -huh. All right. What kind of a pet did old Mother Hubbard have? A dog. A dog is correct. <laughs> Well, you're on your way. You have $38. You remember you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 38 are you going to bet on this one? 36. 36. <laughs> what ran after the farmer's wife? Three blind mice. Three blind mice. That's right. <laughs> I say you are doing mighty well. You have $74. $74. Here's your third question. How much are you going to go for? 70. 73. 73. <laughs> What did Bo Peep tend? Sheep. Sheep is right. Sheep at half the price. Sheep at half the price. I guess there's nothing there. You have $147. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? 147 How does that say? Right. How much have they got? Sure. 147 is getting the whole thing. Huh? Okay, whole thing. Okay. What did Tom the Piper son swipe? Pig. The pig is right. Wind up with a grand total of two hundred and ninety-four dollars. We invited some army officers to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Major Crossley. His partner is a housewife from the audience, Mrs. Sylvia Sparks. Folks, come out here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome to your bet your life. Uh, say the secret word, and you'll divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Uh, Sylvia Sparks, uh, you're, you're the housewife, huh? Yes. You look like you could give off many sparks. Uh. <laughs> I used to wonder who was Sylvia. <laughs> Where are you from, Syl? New York. You from New York? Yes. Uh huh. What does your husband do? He's a mechanical engineer at Norris Stamping and Manufacturing Company. And uh, Major Ross Crosley, uh, what is your hometown, Major? My home is uh, Columbus, Ohio. Are you married, Major? Yes, sir. Very much so. Did you volunteer or were you drafted? <laughs> <laughs> sir, I, I volunteered. Should have married the Army. After 20 years, the Army gives you a pension. <laughs> How long have you been married, Sylvia? Four months. Four months, huh? Eh? First time out? Yeah. <laughs> They say at the racetrack, it's good enough for me, huh? You've been married four months, huh? Now, how long have you been married, Major? Uh, right. I notice you have some decorations on. Is that from the marriage? Uh, no, I've been Distinguished married. Distinguished service at home in the kitchen? Uh, no. Uh, Groucho, I've been married for uh, 13 years. Now, which branch of the service are you in? Uh, I'm in the quartermaster corps. Now, uh, what do you do as a quartermaster? Well, uh, we uh, supervise the procurement of uh, perishable foods for the armed forces. Well, like what, for example? Well, what kind like, of supplies uh, do you purchase? Uh, meats and dairy products and uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, eggs, butter. Well, do you we, pay retail or wholesale prices? Well, we, we uh, pay wholesale prices. Uh, we can't afford to to pay uh, retail prices because we buy in such large volumes. I buy in small quantities and I can't afford to pay retail prices. <laughs> and when you buy in such large quantities, how do you know you're not getting stung? We uh, have everything inspected, uh, uh, Groucho. Uh, if we, uh, for example, if, if we buy meat, why, we have uh, the veterinarian inspect all of it. So um, where do you buy your meat, Santa Anita? <laughs> We buy our meat in the manner, uh, as I just told you, from the packing houses and, and so forth. Now, suppose you buy a carload of strawberries. Do you turn the train over to see if the bad ones are on the bottom? 
Uh, no, we... Uh, well, how do you know? The, all the well, strawberries are uh, going to be good. We have, uh, we have inspectors uh, look at the strawberries. What and, are they? Are they on the bottom of the car? Well, <laughs> they don't turn the whole bottom over, but they may pick a crate here and crate there, and, and sometimes they look on the bottom, too. Well, by the way, as a quartermaster, would you say the Army travels on its stomach? Yes, uh, definitely, yes. The Must Army be quite travels. a sight after a 20-mile hike. <laughs> All those soldiers soaking their tired stomachs in a bucket of warm water. <laughs> All right, now, suppose you're buying meat for your own home. Uh, what do you look for? You, you, Mrs. Sparks. The butcher. <laughs> There's one butcher I usually go to. Oh, you look at the butcher face, huh? I ask him. Mrs. Sparks, Uncle Sam needs you. <laughs> if there were more women like you in the service, the army would stop traveling on the stomach. They'd get up on their toes and follow you. <laughs> well, I've learned a lot about shopping tonight. Now, let's see if you two can win a little grocery money. You might win $2,500. Run you $20 into more than our other couples. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman's offstage to remind our listeners. The librarian and the engineer won $294. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You select the George Washington as your subject. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 15. Let's make it 15. 15. 15? What is the name of George Washington's home? Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon is correct. $35. You'd have missed that major, you'd have been drummed out of the army. Yeah? <laughs> Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much is the 35 you're going to go for? Oh, we'll go for 20. 20? Is that all right, Mrs. Yes. Sparks? What's the first name of George Washington's wife? Martha. Martha is right. <laughs> you know, it's $55. She said he had a lot of candy stores at one time. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the 55 you're going to bet? And we'll bet it all. You're going to bet the 55. All right, where did Washington's army spend the bitter winter of 1777? Valley Forge. Valley Forge, you're right. <laughs> now you have $110. You got $110, and it's your last chance to beat the others. Now, how much are you going to bet? 90. 90, is that all right, uh, Sylvia? In what state was George Washington born? Virginia. Virginia is correct. Put it down, Major. OK. Sylvia, you did a fine job. There. And you wind up yep, with a grand total. all through this thing. Now, you too, fellas. <laughs> you wind up with a grand total of $200, and thank you very much. Uh, Groucho, yeah? the uh, secret word is still door. Talk slow till I get a drag of this. All right. I uh, was going to say that we invited some girl swimmers to the program tonight. And just before we went in the air, our studio audience selected Norma Welts. Her partner is a sculptor, Mr. Yuka Salomunic. And here they are. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Over here, Mr. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. A girl swimmer and a sculptor, eh? Uh, Norma Wells, is, is that? That's right. Uh -huh. Yucca Salomunich? That's right. That's a very famous name. I've often seen it in the menu at the Brown Davy. <laughs> You're some kind of an hors d'oeuvre, aren't you? Uh... No, I'm a sculptor. Uh, oh, a sculptor. Huh? Oh. That's quite a jump from hors d'oeuvres. Huh? How did you ever get a name like Yucca Salamunich? Just like you did. My parents give it to me. As far as I know, your parents didn't even know me. <laughs> now, what does your name mean in the brown day? I mean... Uh... It means salt of Munich. It means what? Salt of Munich. Salt of Munich? That's right. Oh. Now, where are you from, Mr. Salomon? I was born in Yugoslavia. Why did you come to California? Uh, my doctor advised me to get rid of my sinus trouble I have. And did you get rid of your sinus? You get worse than that. You say you didn't get rid of your sinus? No. It's worse than before. <laughs> Case, it's a good thing you came to California. At least you did get rid of your doctor. <laughs> could you could you sound off in Yugoslavian, uh, Yaka? Sure. Uh, I speak it very well, you know. Go ahead, say you something. Ti imaš veoma dobru glavu. Oh, you're a southern uh, <laughs> Okay, I give up. What did you say? You have very interesting head. 
It's really nothing. As a matter of fact, it is nothing. I've seen better heads on a glass of beer. Are you married, Yuck? Yeah. I'll call you Yuck. <laughs> we get familiar very swiftly on this show. <laughs> you, you're married, uh, Yuck? Yeah. How'd, how'd you meet your wife? Well, she used to come to my classes, where I used to lecture in the sculpting, you know, on sculpting. Oh, you were a lecturer? Lecturing. Oh, a lecturer. <laughs> Teaching. Oh, I don't hear very well. I, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> And how did you meet her? She was sitting in the audience and yes, she I was, was spellbound at your lecture? She was not spellbound, but uh, I kind of, uh, she was attracted to me, you see, and uh, I had fallen, fallen in love with her nose. You fell in love with her nose? That's right. <laughs> did she have it with her? Or... Yes. Particularly her left nostril. And you you see... fell in love with her left nostril. Huh? <laughs> what was the matter with the right one? What happened? You, uh, you walked up to her after the lecture? Yeah. And what did you say to her? I told her I like you nose. No, course. this isn't your wife. You're a little... <laughs> now, Norma, that's a very pretty name, Norman. You're a Thank very you. pretty girl. Huh? Thank you. Have you always been this pretty? Well, I guess so. <laughs> You're a swimmer. Do you swim for a living? No, uh, I'm a low freshman at SC. What kind of course are you taking there? Three points of the starboard? <laughs> No, elementary education. Oh. How old, how old are you? Eighteen. Eighteen, huh? Are you being rushed by any of the fraternities at school? No, you mean sororities. Fraternities don't rush women. <laughs> Things have certainly changed since I went to school. We used to rush anything. <laughs> Mr. Salamunic, haven't you got a nickname? Uh, what'll I call you? You don't want me to call you Yuck, huh? Call me Yuck or George. <laughs> I'll call you Yuck. I like it better, too. Let's talk about sculpting. Uh, how, do, how did you acquire this skill? Well, first I was born. Well, then that's I reasonable, went... I believe. Then I went to a famous academy to study. And then? And then I became a sculptor. Well, how did you decide to become a sculptor? I kind of like it, appeal to my sense. I study uh, technical things about sculpture, history of art, and anatomy. Well, I've studied anatomy, but I doubt if I could ever be a sculptor. <laughs> However, I'm uh, told I'm a pretty good chiseler. <laughs> now, do you think that uh, Norma here would make a good statue? I think she would. Are you looking at her nostril, or are you just... <laughs> well, I look at her uh, interesting head. She has a very fine proportion head. Very beautiful uh, nose. Steady there, Yuck. <laughs> now, when you see a beautiful woman, uh, what's the first thing an artist like yourself looks for? What a ridiculous question. I look at her eyes. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't throw me out of here. <laughs> I, I, pardon me, I didn't hear what you said. I say I look at the uh, eyes. You look at the eyes first? Yes. Yeah? Well, I can see I'd be a total loss as a sculptor. <laughs> uh, Norma, uh... Norma, close your eyes. Now, uh, uh, Yuck, you tell me the color of Norma's eyes. I don't know. I thought you just told me you always looked at a woman's eyes. Yeah, but I look at, uh, at her eyes, at the depth of her soul, of her emotion. <laughs> Beauty, inner beauty, you see what I mean? I know. Beauty is only skin deep, eh? And that's good enough for me. <laughs> Norma, you can open your eyes now. I put my mask back on. Now, Yuck, look into Norma's eyes and tell me, what does she look like inside? I think she has a very beautiful soul, no? <laughs> very fine expression, very depth. She's a okay. good person. I can okay. see it. I can you keep see looking it. on the inside, I'll keep looking on the outside. <laughs> now, Yuck, have you done any well-known people in bronze or stone? Yes. I did uh, oh. one of the President Roosevelt before President he died. Roosevelt? Well, you yes. must be very good, huh? I suppose. <laughs> I'll have more respect for you now. You did Roosevelt? Yes. 
And uh, how was he? Did he was he quiet when? He... It was very interesting. You see, during this uh, work, he asked me, he says, "What do you want me to do?" I told him to keep his mouth closed. You see. And uh... are you a Republican? <laughs> no. The next day, the newspaper misinterpreted my story, and they told him, I told him to keep his mouth shut. Of course, I didn't. I just told him to keep his mouth closed, because, as you know, when you work, you have to keep your mouth closed, you know? I uh, want to tell you that we're honored to have you here. I had no idea that you were such a talented sculptor. Thank you. I thought you were one of those cheap guys that stood on Atlantic City on the beach or something. <laughs> oh, Norma, what is your specialty as, as a swimmer? The uh, backstroke. The backstroke? Could, mm -hmm. could you give us uh, an example of the backstroke? Right here. Well, you. Why not? I'm going to be water. Is, uh... Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's enough. It's not enough, huh? No. Is there any water in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> well, just just, just get us a kind of a, what they call a dry run. Okay. <laughs> Like that, it's easy. Just swim. And that's all you do? That's all you do, and kick your feet. Don't you do, huh? Kick your feet. Well, do it and kick your feet at the same time. <laughs> well, thanks to you two, I know all about swimming and sculpting, and if I ever decide to have my statue carved, I'll go jump in the lake. <laughs> well, let's see how well you make out in the quiz. You run your $20 and the more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,500 question. I can't tell you how much uh, our other couples won, but George Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The librarian and the engineer are still ahead with $294. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build your $20. You selected international landmarks. This is your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to risk? Uh, $15, yeah. $15? In what country do you find the pyramids? In Egypt. Egypt is right. And you're off to a good start. You have $35. Yes, $35. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 35 are you going to bet on this? 30. Okay, 30. 30. In what country do you find the Louvre? L O U V R E. Louvre in France. In France, in France. is right. <laughs> now you have $65. $65. How much are you going to bet this time? You bet 60. Okay, 60. Yuck is a real chiseler. Isn't <laughs> in what country do you find the Leaning Tower? In Pisa, Italy. In Italy is right. <laughs> now you climb to one hundred and twenty-five dollars. One hundred and twenty-five dollars is your last chance to be the other couples. How much are you going to go for? One hundred twenty. One hundred twenty-five is that? Yeah, let's put the whole the whole business. Don't kiss her, y'all. Just talk it over. <laughs> okay. One hundred twenty-five is that? Let's put one hundred twenty-five. Okay. In what country do you find the Acropolis? In Greece. In Greece is right. And you wind up with a grand total of $250, and that means the librarian and the geologist with $294 get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. All right, now we find out you've been hanging around these books all these years. We find out if you really know anything. Here we go for $2,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. If the President of the United States and the Vice President should both resign, who is next in line to succeed to the office of Chief Executive? The Secretary of State. He's the Secretary of State and the Chief Justice. One answer between you. Talk it over. Talk it over. And we want one answer between you. All right, what is the answer you two have decided upon? We'll say the Secretary of State. No, I, I'm sorry. According to law, passed in 1947, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth $3,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won how much? $294. $294 in the quiz. Congratulations, and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight.